This video explains how to find intersections between two data objects using the intersect function in the R programming language. So without much talk, let's dive into the R code. In the first example of this tutorial, I will show you how to find intersections between two vector objects. And for this, we first need to create two vector objects, as you can see in lines 2 to 6 of the code. So in line 2 of the code, I'm creating our first vector object called x1. And we can print this vector object to the bottom in the RStudio console by running line 3. And then you can see that our first vector object contains the letters a, b, c, d, and e. In the next step, in line 5 of the code, I'm creating another data object called x2. And we can print this data object to the bottom in the RStudio console as well. And then you can see that our second data object contains the characters C, D, E, and F. So as you might already have noticed, some of the data values in our data objects are identical. And we can find the intersection between our two vector objects using the intersect function. And I'm also specifying base in front of the function because there are also packages which contain functions that are called intersect. And for that reason, it's useful to specify the package that you want to use explicitly in front of the function. So in this case, I want to use the basic installation of the intersect function. And for that reason, I'm specifying base in front of the function. And then within the function, I'm specifying the names of the two data objects that I want to check. So in this case, the two vector objects x1 and x2. And then I'm storing the output of the intersect function in a new data object that I'm calling x1, x2, inter. So after running line 8 of the code, this new data object is appearing at the top right. And we can print the content of this new data object by running line 9 of the code. And then you can see that our new data object contains only those letters that were contained in both our input data objects x1 and x2. So in this first example, I have explained how to find the intersection between two vector objects. However, it's also possible to find the intersection between two data frames. And this is what I want to show you in the next example, starting in line 11 of the code. So as a first step, we need to create a first data frame, as you can see in lines 11 and 12. So after running these lines of code, our new data frame data1 is appearing at the top right. And if you click on this data set, a new window is opened, which is showing the structure of our first data frame. And as you can see, this data frame contains five rows and the two columns call1 and call2. Now we can also create a second data frame, as you can see in lines 14 and 15 of the code. So after running these lines of code, a second data frame is appearing at the top right. And if you click on this data frame, another window is opened, which is showing the structure of our second example data frame. And as you can see, this data frame contains only four rows, but also the two columns call one and call two. Now, let's assume that we want to find those rows that are contained in both our data frames. Then we can apply the intersect function of the dplyr package. And for this, we first need to install and load the dplyr package, as you can see in lines 17 and 18 of the code. I have installed the package already, so for that reason, I'm just going to load it with line 18 of the code. And then in the next step, I'm using the intersect function of the dplyr package. So please note that I'm explicitly specifying the name of the dplyr package in front of the function. And then within the intersect function, I'm specifying the names of our two data frames, data1 and data2. And I'm storing the output of this in another data frame object that I'm calling data1 to inter. So after running line 20 of the code, this new data frame is appearing at the top right. And if you click on this data frame, you can see that we have created a new data frame, which contains only the rows that were contained in both our data frames, data one and data two. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. 
I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.